Hello, everybody. It's Tish Williams, Executive Director of the Hancock Chamber of Commerce, here to present to you a new opportunity for chamber members and non-chamber members. If you have been wanting to go to Greece, as I have for many, many years, then this is the trip for you. And I'm really excited that really for the first time in the history of the Hancock Chamber, we are joining with other chambers throughout the world who travel together on international trips like the one that we are gonna provide to you this year. And with me is a representative from uh, Aventura World, and they are the um, travel group that will be working with us to make your trip a memorable experience. So please welcome Vibe Seal. Vibe. Hi, good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining in. Thank you, Tish, and the chamber staff. Uh, this is Vibe here. I represent Aventura World, and uh, really excited to share with you some details. Uh, about the trip that goes to Greece in the month of November this year. The departure date is 4th of November. The session should last around 40 to 45 minutes with the slide deck, followed by some questions. Uh, these questions can become a repository of the FAQs that might follow later on. Uh, the slides towards the end are quite important because they take you through the entire booking and payment process, important dates to note down and so on. So uh, stick till the end so that you don't miss out on the important parts. And uh, this session is also being recorded just in case you want to fetch a copy from the chamber uh, to revisit all the aspects that we cover. So here we go. Well, first things first, uh, you should know about whom you are working with and whom the chamber has selected for organizing this trip. So Aventura World has been in business since 1972 which means we are celebrating our 50th year this year. Uh, we have been into the uh, nonprofit chamber travel programs, and we are the official travel partners of Association of Chambers of Commerce Executives. Um, giving it a number, we are basically one of the biggest travel providers for chambers of commerce across the United States and Canada. Uh, we have office uh, on, the, the head office is in New Jersey, we have offices in West Coast in the US and California. We have an office in Paris, one uh, regional uh, location in Rome, quite a big presence over there. A back end office, one each in London and New Delhi, and a very sizable presence in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, we are the member of the Saqqara International Group that employs thousands of people around the world. That includes uh, river, cruise, river cruise boards, hotels, coach buses, and many other ground handling services. We are a travel wholesaler, which means that we bring in tremendous value prices without affecting the quality. Uh, we are a company that changes with time. Now, this is an important thing to note, especially when uh, we have such volatile things keeping on going for almost two years. Uh, we are a company that was nimble and adaptable enough to, to change according to the changing times. One of the examples is uh, we brought in a very, very benevolent and a very liberal uh, cancellation policy. We also brought in a, an additional insurance product, which is called as cancel for any reason. As we go through the slides, we would have uh, the opportunity of understanding each one of them. Uh, if you have any questions, kindly reserve it till the end because you never know the next slide actually reveals uh, the details you have been looking for. So uh, here we go and uh, welcome to the presentation once again. The trip we are talking about is called as the Greece, a land of gods and heroes. Uh, important dates to note is the trip departs on November 4th, 2022 and comes back on November 12th. Uh, so it is basically seven nights of stay and overall nine days on your calendar and the flight and you fly out from New Orleans. So the major airport close to the chamber is New Orleans where we have planned the trip out from. There is an ongoing early bird discount which is available for the next nine days and I would really, really encourage everyone and anybody looking at this presentation or the, or the communication from the chamber to avail this early bird discount because it's going away quickly on the 29th of April. 
The benefits of this discount is that you get $100 off, which means the trip comes at $3,149 instead of $3,249 after 29th of April. Also, you get one extra optional tour free to Delphi, which is worth $169. So overall, if you act fast, you are basically saving $269. Uh, there is an optional extension to the trip which goes to the island of Santorini. We would discuss that in the later slides when, when we actually go through the booking process and all the list of inclusions that we have. Well, Greece is known for its beautiful countryside, its history spanning centuries, I must say millennia, uh, and culture and tradition world famous sites there is so many places that people have in their bucket list when they want to travel to greece amazing food and wine very very friendly people very humble and friendly people let me tell you one of the most humble population in in europe is actually the greek people uh day one which is fourth of november we depart for greece from new orleans uh given the fact we don't have a uh, non-stop flight that goes to Athens from New Orleans, we would definitely be making a connection. That connection can be anywhere in United States at a major airport or at a major connection in Europe. Uh, for example, uh, maybe in Paris, in Amsterdam, in Frankfurt, in Zurich or something similar. Uh, day two, we arrive in Greece. So when I say you depart on day one and you arrive in Greece on day two does not mean that you're taking like 48 hours or two full days to travel to Greece. It does that because we are flying eastwards. We are losing some time on the calendar, which we'll make up while we come back. So you fly on the fourth, you arrive on the fifth because the calendar has flipped since we are flying east. Uh, you are welcomed into Athens, the capital of the of Greece and uh, which kind of holds a record of being one of the longest serving country capital. I must say the only few parallels in this world might be Cairo in Egypt or Rome uh, in Italy or Baghdad in uh, uh, Iraq. Uh, at Athens airport, you would be met by one of our representatives who would uh, help you in settling down in the coach bus uh stowing away all the luggage and giving you a bit of briefing about the journey ahead uh this is a sample coach bus that we use uh, usually these coach buses are anywhere from 50 to 55 seater and we have a policy of not filling up these buses beyond 75 percent of the capacity in the recent times when there was a stricter social distancing norm we were actually not filling up these buses beyond 60% capacity. So right now we are back to the 75% capacity, which means uh, if it's a 50 seater bus, there would be a maximum of 35 passengers on the bus. So it's quite roomy, quite spacious and very comfortable. Uh, we would be spending seven nights in one location. So this is one of the merits of being on this trip. Why? Because as a chamber, when you travel in a group and you also tend to meet people who come through other chambers of commerce across US and Canada, you want the opportunity of mingling with people, talking to them, developing friendships, developing relations and so on. And also, you don't want a trip whereby you are packing and unpacking very frequently. We call this concept as a cruise on land philosophy, which means that just like as a cruise, you check in into your cabin and you stay there and the ship moves. Well, here the hotel is not moving, but we move in different directions and see different places of interest as marked on the map. But we stay seven straight nights in this lovely beach location called as Kineta at the Kineta Beach Resort. Uh, well, Kineta is actually an hour eastwards of Athens, uh, right? It's actually a beachside property. So you are not in the hustle bustle of a main city, but in a very quiet place. It still has some beautiful villas around it and a nice country road right passing right next to it. And it's very close to the Corinth Canal. So it has a lot of places of interest around it. But the best thing is that you are so centrally located that you all the dots on the map that you see are the places that we would be visiting and staying in Kineta 
basically reduces our daily travel time to not more than two and a half hours one side. So you do not do a lot of packing, unpacking. You get to mingle with a lot of people or you are staying at a beach property and it is reducing your daily commute going to points of interest. So this is what the resort uh, looks like. It, it's called as the Kineta Beach Resort and Spa. And they've had a very long standing and loyal relationship with Aventura World for all its group travel programs to Greece. Uh, the specialities or the features as they come uh, are very spacious and lively looking rooms, very convenient with shower cabins or bathtubs and hair dryer and flat screen satellite TV, safety box, electronic uh, locking systems, Wi-Fi, telephone, air conditioning and heating, uh, mini fridges and a lot of things that you can ask for. Uh, the bed configurations can be in, in the sense of either you have two split beds or one big be bed for yourself. Dimensions of beds in Europe are different from what we have in US. So I'm not using the terms queen, king or twin or anything like that. I'm saying two disjoint beds or, or one single big joint bed. So you can make a choice of what kind of bed you want in the room. Uh, and you would be allocated with the room that basically suffices the, the condition. The resort in itself is very well attended with uh, three different restaurants, patio seating. Uh, you can have your breakfast at the patio. Uh, there are a couple of pools at the resort. There is sporting um, activities that you can do like basketball and lawn tennis. Uh, you can just walk out to the beach because it's it's there. It's not a sandy beach. It's a pebble beach, but it's a very, very beautiful long beach just to take a stroll uh, alongside and enjoy uh, the local weather. Now, a lot of people ask me what kind of a climate they would be seeing. Well, Greece's climate is very much like that of Southern California, like a San Diego type of weather, but it's a little more drier than California. So you uh, November happens to be a very good time to be in this country for two reasons. Number one, it's not the priciest of times to be in Greece. Secondly, uh, the weather is conducive to outdoor sightseeing as well as, uh, you know, it's never too hot, it's never too cold, it's just right so that you don't feel too drained while doing your sightseeing activities, uh, either in the sun or in the cold. And secondly, um, it, it's, it's, it allows you to dress up the way you want to. So you feel a little more relaxed in that kind of a weather. Uh, well, the day two basically lets you relax and settle into the Greek life. There is no more activity planned for the day two after your arrival at the hotel. You check in, you relax, you chit chat with people or just acclimatize with the new time zone and weather pattern. And then on day three, we have our touring that begins with the city tour of Athens. So Athens being the capital, as you know, is uh, an hour away from Kineta. So we drive in the morning after breakfast uh, to Athens for our full day city tour, which covers the stadium of the first modern Olympic games that took place in 1896. We go to the Ark of Hadrian and the Temple of Olympian Zeus. Uh, we go to the parliament and the memorial to the unknown soldier. Uh, we, if we are lucky or if our uh, timings are perfect, then we do see the change of guard taking place. We drive past the academy, the National Library of Greece, uh, Plato and the Athenian statues at the Academy of Athens, the Constitution Square, and conclude the day by going to the Acropolis. We spend a considerable time at the Acropolis and the Parthenon. And uh, one of the things that I would like to mention over here is we have been working with some really amazing uh, tour managers and guides that have been working with us for a very long time. And they are the people who make or break the trip. Uh, their delivery of, of the details is quite interesting. With the experience that they have gained by working with us, uh, they have kind of developed the cultural competence of working with American or Canadian clients, and they understand the point of view from where your questions are coming 
or they at least make an effort of understanding the American point of view so that they can answer your questions based on that. It's also important to note uh, that um, Athens will appear once again in your itinerary towards the end. So if you think that one day is not enough, uh, don't worry, you would have another opportunity, another shot of coming back to Athens and checking out more places and even having a little bit more time for you to do things just by yourself. Day four, uh, so after the day three, when we have a full day sightseeing, day four is a little slower day. You would see, you would not be going to an urban area, but you would be going to more of the countryside in the mountainside village of Peloponnese Peninsula. So if I quickly circle back to uh, the uh, map, this is where uh, the peninsula is, where we are going. And it's a beautiful countryside drive when we when we go through all the mountain roads and and crisscross between little hamlets on the way. Uh, we reached Mycenae, which is the Homeric city rich in gold and the city of the ancient poets. Uh, I would definitely leave the narration about the place uh, to the guides who are conducting it. They are the story weavers, and I would leave it to them. Uh, to explain you the significance of this place. But one thing I can tell you is uh, all these places are quite ancient and they have been uh, kept in a certain way. Their stories have so much of um, history and interesting facts to find out. So I would really appreciate if all of these travelers become like kids in their curiosity and ask the questions to the guys and they would really love and and these stones will start speaking for themselves then we go to the the great mighty lion's gate and the cyclopean walls uh, the beehive royal tomb the ancient theater of epidarius this is a wonderful place for somebody who loves scientific architectural buildings uh, this place has an amazing acoustics even today if you drop a coin in the center you can hear it right at the top so the acoustics are really mind-boggling we then um, slip into our evening uh, at Nafplion, one of greece's prettiest and most romantic towns it also is famous for the rich folks making their villas and retiring into this region um, Nafplion is a small, has a small port beneath the towering fortress. So you can see the fortress in this picture and in the town below it. And this is from the other angle from the uh, fortress and looking at the town below it. Uh, it is famous for its quayside cafes and boutiques. As I said, um, the rich people retire in this area. So definitely the shops and the cafes and all the places will bear some kind of an influence of the people who live over there. You have a free time to take a stroll, to explore the place, to pick up some things if you like, maybe souvenirs or things for yourself if you want to. It's absolutely an, a charming experience of going in the streets. And as I said initially, that Greek people are really friendly. You would really enjoy this experience in Nafplion. Uh, one of the features of Aventura World Trips, and especially when we work with Chambers of Commerce, is that Chambers want to include something cultural, something very signature to the destination we go to. And we have named this activity as the Cultural Discovery Series. In this particular tour, we have actually, initially when you arrive in Greece, you would be in the evening, you would be met by an expert a professor from a local university who would talk about the Greek lifestyle, would talk about the Greek culture. So that would be the first thing in the cultural discovery series that you would be doing. The second thing that you would be doing is the olive oil tasting. And it does not mean that we'll serve you olive oil and you just gobble it up. We basically take you to a, a farm which in which you would see how olives are collected, how they are sorted and graded, how they are cleaned, and how they are pressed into the into the oil press, and how the byproducts are created. And you can ask the questions. I mean, you you can buy a face pack or a face cream made out of olive oil or its paste. 
uh, absolutely up to you. It's it's not like a typical tourist trap kind of a place. It's a genuine business happening over there and a great place to learn about uh, the importance of this product in Greek culture. Day four concludes and day five, we start with crossing the Corinth Canal. Well, Corinth Canal is not very far away from where we would be staying at Kineta. And uh, this is a very important passage uh, for uh, merchant ships and leisure vessels in Greece. Uh, we board a boat to cruise, uh, not this boat, uh, but a big one, and we cross the canal. The canal actually connects uh, the Saronic Gulf uh, in the agency to the Isthmus of Corinth, which basically separates the Peloponnese from the Greek mainland. Again, the geography lesson is quite typical, but if you want, you can pick up Google Maps and see where Corinth Canal is and why it is so significant. Well, for us, it is significant because very recently we had a group who did not have the opportunity of crossing the Corinth Canal. Why? Because it is an important seafaring route, especially for merchant ships. And if you remember, there was a blockade in the Suez Canal uh, some months back in Egypt. And when the blockade opened up, there was a backlog of so many ships that wanted to pass through different waterways that there was a traffic jam in the Corinth Canal too. So they gave priority to merchant ships and not to leisure ves vessels. Well, that thing has opened up very recently. So the leisure vessels are going into the canal and this is what you would be doing over there. So uh, it's, it's quite an interesting journey. It's, it, it's interesting to know how this, this whole uh, man-made marvel was created. This is what you would be noticing from, from your boat, from your ferry. Well, this activity concludes with another cultural discovery series thing whereby you would be sampling the local liquor, ouzo. Ouzo is a famous uh, Greek uh, drink that people enjoy a lot. Uh, there are different ways of having it. You can ask somebody local to teach you their way, their favorite way of enjoying ouzo, uh, coupled with some snacks and food. Uh, it also is a, in a very quaint and interesting setting right besides the canal where you can still see merchant ships going up and down. So it's, it's quite a laid back, relaxed day with just a cruise and having ouzo and chit chatting and, and see the world go by. So it's a great way of, of developing bonding and meeting people and talking to them. Day six is the optional tour. So either you have a free day or you can take up the optional tour to Delphi. I always recommend everybody to take it. However, this can be available to you for free if you register for the tour by 29th of April, which means if you remember the early bird discount explanation I gave, that if you register yourself for the tour before 29th April, you are saving $100 and getting this tour, which is worth $169, absolutely free. If you're staying back at the hotel and sometimes chambers want some free time because there are chambers who go on trips with an agenda of some kind of a, a meeting or some kind of uh, a reception or a session or a workshop, they absolutely get the free time to do it. Otherwise, you can avail the opportunity of going on this Delphi tour. What it covers is a visit to the Apollo Temple, the Athenian century, the treasury of the Athenians, the ancient stadium in, in Delphi, and the Delphi Museum. I would really urge everybody to look up uh, on the internet or any kind of resource that you have, and Delphi is one worth visiting place. And again, if you act fast, you can get it all for free. Day seven is again an optional tour. Again, uh, I would say 99% of the chamber travelers get Delphi tour in their itinerary. So chambers, again, insist on having some free time. Again, if your chamber does not want it, all of you can go on this optional tour to Olympia. Uh, this is at an added charge of $169. Once again, it's not included in the tour. If you don't want it, you can absolutely stay back at the hotel, enjoy the beach, enjoy the rest at the hotel and so on. Um, 
if you are on the tour, your lunch would be served while touring. If you are staying back at the hotel, your lunch would be served at the hotel. Uh, if, if you are taking up the Olympia trip, it's basically the birthplace of the Olympic Games, the ancient Olympic Games. Uh, we go to the Temple of Hera, the Temple of Zeus in Olympia, and the ancient Olympia's stadium. The archway behind uh, in this picture is actually the finish line of the famous uh, marathon race as we know it today. And this is what the Olympic site of the ancient Olympics look like. And that's the archway far way back in the, in the picture over here. Day eight, uh, as I told you, we would be going back to Athens. Uh, we have this tour to the Museum of Acropolis. So previously we were seeing all the ancient sites and now we are seeing the museum where a lot of these artifacts have been brought in from different places in Greece and in, put into this museum. Interestingly, when the foundations were being dug for the museum, they again found some archeological remains below it, which were still kept intact and the museum was built over and around it. Uh, it's a great place to uh, to basically put all the pieces of the puzzle together. What all you have seen in the country, you would be able to see them uh, in the museum and you would have a better grasp over uh, your geographical and historical and cultural knowledge of the country. Uh, great, mu great museum start has artifacts starting right from the Bronze Age to the Roman to the Byzantine Greece. Great food to enjoy. I mean, after the museum, you will have a free time to enjoy in Athens. Um, the, the tour manager would pick up a point uh, and set you free. You, you can venture out, do your stuff and have uh, decide on a time and, and spot to meet you once again to pick you up. Uh, because you're going to Athens for the first time, you would have a lot of understanding of the directions and things that you can do over there. And you also have some understanding of how it how things work in Greece. So go out, you have your own time to, to shop around, to pick up things from the local market. Great variety of citrus fruits, let me tell you. Uh, you can pick up some souvenirs. And again, these are places which are non-touristy. These are places where the locals go, where the locals shop. So it's very authentic uh, for understanding the place. Day eight concludes uh, and day nine when we depart for Athens and the airport and we make our way back home for a flight to US. And we reach US on day nine itself uh, because now this time we are traveling west. Uh, what all is included in this tour? So it includes your round trip air transportation from New Orleans. So your flight is included from New Orleans. Uh, you have seven nights of accommodation included. You have 20 meals included, which can, comprises of seven breakfasts, six lunches, and seven dinners. Uh, your local alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks at the bar each evening are included. Now, this is a way to party, let me tell you. And, and let me not miss out. All the meals that you would be served on the flights are also part of the inclusions. Your sightseeing activities, your local guide, and all the entrance fees that are applicable are included in the tour. Uh, crossing of the Corinth Canal, a visit of the Peloponnese Peninsula, and, and other stuff like the olive oil tasting, the, the uh, lecture by the local guest speaker, the ouzo tasting, everything is included in this. The only things that are not included are the optional tours. If you miss out on the Delphi, you might have to buy it separately. Uh, the Olympia tour, which is also an optional tour, which is not included. Your local transport starting right from airport pickup till drop, including all your sightseeing is included. Uh, professional tour director and guides are included. Uh, we'll assist you in baggage handling for putting it in the bus and again, taking it out. And again, putting it in when you check out, that's included. So kind of a port of service for handling your baggage is included. How much is it priced for? It's $3,149 for per person on a double occupancy basis, which means if there are two people staying in a room, uh, like a couple of friends or sisters or whatever, it is $3,149 per person. 
if you are only single person, which means you are the only one occupying the room all by yourself, then it is 3,149 plus a supplement of $699. Um, there's an additional $150 tax uh, on the tour price, but the fuel surcharges of $536 are already included. Now, uh, the price is, in, is correct if you pay by if you pay your deposit by April 29th, otherwise the price goes up by $100 and the Delphi tour becomes a paid tour. If you have more time and if you want to stay longer, if you want to spend a little more money, you can extend your trip to the island of Santorini. Well, if you're doing that, the trip will uh, tip to Santorini will commence on the 12th of November. This is the date when the rest of your friends would fly back and you would be taking a flight to Santorini and would then be coming back on the 15th of November. If you take the, this trip, your the added inclusions are your two nights of hotel stay in Santorini, your domestic flights between Santorini and Athens, uh, two breakfasts, all your sightseeing activity, and another cultural discovery activity of wine tasting in Santorini, your professional tour directors, baggage handling, etc. The price for taking uh, Santorini extension is $799 additional per person on a double occupancy basis at $299 as a single supplement if you are a single traveler by yourself. Santorini is quite interesting. It's a volcanic island with very steep cliffs. Uh, it is one of the picture postcard uh, places for Greece with all that blue and white color combinations. Day 10, uh, so day 9, uh, the rest of the group flies back to US. We guys fly into Santorini, check in into the hotel, and day 10, we start our touring. We tour Santorini by starting with the Monastery of Prophetus, uh, the, the town of Pygros, the wine museum where we do the wine tasting activity as a cultural discovery series. We go to the little village of Oya, which basically is the most photographed place around Santorini and see some amazing streets. Uh, now, if you see that, uh, and as I told you, this, this island is uh, constructed on steep cliffs. There is some walking up and down. Uh, you need sturdy shoes. You need to have a bit of physical ability of going around in Santorini. And that is one of the reasons we have kept it optional because uh, firstly, not many people have all the uh, day offs from work or can't spend the entire money on just one trip, but also for the people who can't do physically exhausting stuff. So this is a little more challenging compared to the rest of the Greek trip that we did, but it's worth doing that. It's, it's so pristine and beautiful. Some pictures of, of the sites that you would be seeing. And day 11, we connect back to Athens to our flight to US. Uh, some key aspects. Now, these are the important moments in the slideshow. Um, please pay attention to all the details. And if you want to make notes, please make notes right here. Uh, visa, you do not require a visa to travel to Greece if you are a US citizen. Uh, all the, just two uh, requirements that you have to fulfill. Number one is your passport should be valid six months beyond your return date from Greece, which means if your return date is 12th of November, add six months to that. And if your passport is valid beyond those six months, you are good to travel. The second condition you have to fulfill is the passport should have minimum two blank pages on it. So if you fulfill those two conditions, which means your passport is valid beyond six months of your return date, and if your passport has two blank pages, you are good to travel to Greece. You don't need any visa. They will just stamp your passport with an immigration stamp at the airport. If you have a passport of any other country, uh, apart from US or Canada, uh, I would insist that you check with your local embassy or any on dependable online resources whether you need a visa to travel to Greece and you will have to make your own arrangements for getting the visa well in time. How to sign up? There are two ways of doing it. 
the old and traditional way is the paper form and the more preferred and more convenient way is the online booking engine. I will go through each one of them one by one. So the first one is the paper form. Uh, it is the last page of the brochure the chamber would have shared with you. If not, ask for this uh, brochure and you should get the registration form, uh, which is the last page of the brochure. And uh, it is one form per passenger. Even if you are a couple traveling together, you would have to fill in two different forms each for, for each respective person. Um, check the details, uh, keep your passport handy while you're filling this form up because you will have to firstly write very legibly so that we can read it and make out what you have written. Secondly, tally everything from your passport like your first name, last name as it's on the passport, your date of birth, your passport number, the country of issue and so on. Now, if you have a passport from a different country which uses a different date format, so remember in US, the date format is month, date and year, but certain countries have date, month and year. So just be a little more specific while writing uh, the dates over here so that we know that you're still writing in the American format. So month, date and year. Email address, mailing address, city, if you are going as single or not, or if you are double or twin, whom you are pairing with, write your fellow passenger's name. There's an area to write some notes. For example, uh, you have some special requests and I will talk about the special request section in a later stage uh, when we discuss the online booking system because that will cover them up together. You have two columns over here. The first column talks about if you are utilizing the early bird discount. Uh, sorry, this is for the optional tours. So Delphi tour, whether you want it or not, if you reserve by 29th of April, you get it for free. Olympia tour, if you want to or not, and it's for $169. Whether you want Santorini as a single or as a double, please do that. This is the place where it's actually two columns. The first column corresponds to the early bird discount stage. And this one corresponds to if you're registering after 29th of April. So the price goes up by $100 the Delphi tour becomes a paid tour. The next section is the travel protection, which is the insurance section. I have a separate slide to explain it and I will jump back to that one. But the one thing that you have to note is your insurance is based on the total trip price that you are paying. So if the trip price is between 3,000 to 3,500, there is a different insurance amount. If it's above that, it's a different insurance amount and so on. The deposit to register yourself is $600. If you make that deposit by 29th of April, you straight away qualify for the early bird discount. If you are buying any optional tours or Santorini extension and the insurance, um, those things are to be paid up front with your deposit. There are two ways to make payments. One is through check and the other one is through a credit card. If you are making a check, draw the check in name of Aventura World, send it to your Chamber of Commerce office. There's an address written over here for the Chamber's uh, office. And they would firstly note that you have made, uh, the, made the registration and made a check and then relay that thing to us at our New Jersey office. Uh, the other way is the credit card uh, payment. However, the current norms do not allow us uh, to take your credit card details on a paper form. So what we will do is we will use your email address and send you a secure link to key in your credit card details and authorize the payment based on the calculations done over here. The cancellation policy. Now, this is an important section. When I started the presentation, I was talking about a very liberal cancellation policy that we came up with last year because of the uncertainties of COVID-19. Uh, if you cancel the tour 131 days before departure, 131 days is four months and 10 days before departure, you get 100% of your money back, paid to Aventura World, back to you, uh, no questions asked. When I say the money paid to Aventura World is 
all the money that you pay for your touring and everything except the insurance money because the insurance money goes to the insurance company not to us so any money paid to aventura world if you cancel before 131 days before departure we will return you the entire money no questions asked then it goes down in progression which means if you cancel between 130 and 91 days we retain $800 and return the money back and so on. So uh, it gives us, uh, it basically makes you feel that, okay, it's good time to act, use the early bird discount so that you secure the price. And if by any chance you don't get to travel, you still have the time to get the entire money back. So your money is safe and yet you are using the early bird discount well in time. You sign it here, you put the date and send it uh, to the chamber and they would be able to relay it to us. Um, now, the other way and the more preferred way is the online booking system, whereby you have this link over here, which says aventuraworld.com forward slash booking. This link is also on the first page uh, and it also has a booking code, which is S-T-A-R-E-B. Uh, but before we go to the online booking system, I will quickly touch base on travel insurance, which we skipped from this section. So travel insurance is basically of two types. Number one is the trip interruption and cancellation insurance. So that covers your pre-trip cancellation due to sickness or death of you or immediate family. It covers you for the medical on the trip trip interruption, travel delay, missed connection, emergency medical evacuation, lost baggage and personal effects and baggage delay. Um, we offer insurance through our insurance partners, uh, which are CSA Generali Insurance. Now we have a special additional feature to our trip interruption and cancellation uh, insurance, which is cancel for any reason. Now, this is a premium product and obviously costlier than the regular insurance. So if you go, if I go back to the previous slide, insurance is basically of two price ranges. So if you want to add the feature of cancel for any reason, it's basically 50% costlier than the regular insurance. Um, there is a separate portal on our website which talks in detail about that because I am not a licensed insurance broker, so I can only talk about um, promoting it rather than soliciting it. So uh, that cancel for any reason basically covers you uh, to, if you have this feature, uh, it covers you for canceling for any reason, like any means, and they, nobody's asking you a question and you can get your money back if you cancel up to 48 hours before departure. And what it covers you for is 60% of your money is given back to you as an insurance claim. And 35% of your money is offered to you as future travel credit from Aventura World. So 65 plus 35% becomes 100%. 65% comes back as claim. 35% is offered as a future travel credit or any of the Aventura World trips that you take. The online booking system. So if you remember, we had the booking links over here and the booking code. You go on the link and you come to this portal. Since you might be the first time user, you would have to create a, a login for yourself. And once you create a login, you get this little message and an email into your mailbox. You confirm your email and you log in once again. And once you log in again, you have the opportunity of keying in the booking code over here, which is S-T-A-R-E-B. And then you enter the dedicated booking portal of Hancock Chamber of Commerce in Greece trip. You have the opportunity of downloading the brochure once again from here if you don't have a copy handy at that time. There are six successive screens over here, which are exactly corresponding to the six sections in the booking form as we saw previously. The first one is, it basically takes the most time, otherwise the rest of them are just click, click and go. And the computer will do all the calculations for you. So if you scroll down on the first screen, you have the passenger information, you key in all your details. If you're adding another passenger, you can add it right here. So you don't have to fill two different forms as you were supposed to do in a paper form. 
you also have the opportunity of selecting whether you are paying for the additional passenger or each passenger pays for themselves. If you select this option, we send two different payment requests. If you select this option, we just send one collective payment request. It's quite, quite self-explanatory. And we proceed to the next page and we are on room two, which talks about the room occupancy. So here, whether we are on a single room or a double room, uh, any other special notes, whether you are, um, you like vegan food or you're allergic to something, if you have any special requests. Also, this is the place where you can also put, if you are, uh, if you want any kind of upgrades, upgrades like if you want to fly business class, so you can put your upgrade request over here. We would really recommend that you ask for upgrade request right up front because there are passengers who come on later and say that, hey, we want to upgrade our trip to a business class. And then obviously the pricing suddenly changes and they have variable pricing going on. Sometimes it's not even available on, on the airline because they all have been booked. So you key in all the special requests over here, you proceed to the next page, which is airline gateway departure. Now, Tish did mention it's for members and non-members. And when you say non-members, they can be located anywhere in the United States. If you have friends and family who do not live close to the airport or cannot make it to the New Orleans airport, they can ask for a separate quotation from us. Let's say you have a friend who lives in Chicago and you are inviting them to this tour. We will be happy to provide a pricing from Chicago. You just have to key in the details over here. If you don't want us to book your air at all on this trip, we will discount this trip for $800 and uh, you can book your own air by yourself. There are people who do it because they have a lot of miles on their card and they can do it that way. So we'll reduce the price for you by $800 and you can do your own airfare based on your own convenience. So you can check this option. Optional tours, so if it's Delphi tour, I took this screen grab before 29th of April, so it shows me $0. Olympia Tours, Santorini extension, check, 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 and go. Uh, insurance page, this is the page where you just agree to buying insurance. There's a separate link to buy insurance, and I will show you that in the following slides. So whether you want insurance or you don't want, it will also give you the amount applicable uh, corresponding to the price of the tour for you. The final page talks about the summary of uh, what the trip amount is, what the Olympia tour amount in this case is, what the amount for the Santorini extension is and how much the total of your tour price would be. Uh, it asks you to either pay the deposit plus the optional price uh, upfront, or you can pay in full if you want to. You click on the accept the terms and conditions. If you want, you can read through the terms and conditions and you have the option of paying by a credit or debit card or using the PayPal services. Now, circling back to insurance, how to buy insurance. So on our website, aventuraworld.com, you have a section which says travel protection. You click on this travel protection section and you find this button that says get coverage. You Once you click on this, you reach on a dedicated portal for buying uh, travel coverage. I've used some dummy figures of $4,000 of metric value to use this portal for your convenience. So what I did was I just keyed in some dummy dates and a trip value of $4,000 and it gave me an entire list of what is covered, how much it is for. And you can again, click on all these links to know more about how the coverage takes place. So it gives a completely detailed view and also gives you the tour plan and tour code and everything. And then you proceed to the next page. Uh, sorry, you scroll down on step two and you have more details and you can add the feature of cancel for any reason over here. Uh, you go to the next page, which is step three. You key in your uh, personal details and your contact details and you move ahead. And then you go, you scroll down and you add the beneficiary information, which is if anything happens to you, who would be the beneficiary of that amount? 
the travel agency detail, I'd love if you can make a note of it, is 201-51005. You might have to key that in. And then in this section, primary destination will be Greece. Airline, just put undecided for now. And step four is the payment section for uh, buying the insurance. So that concludes my session. If you want me to circle back to any of the slides, you can let me know if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Vi. That was a great presentation. I am ready to go to Greece. Thank you. Thank so you, I really appreciate everything. It was very thorough. I don't really think there are any questions at all, except how do we sign up? And, you know, you made the point very clear, April 29th, that is the early bird deadline. So I guess I have just a few questions. So if I sign up for the early bird deadline and I only want to pay my deposit, what is my deposit going to be? So the deposit is $600. Uh, but if you are also buying the Santorini extension, uh, the price for the extension and the insurance is also part of the deposit. But just for the okay, trips, you have to add that on to the six hundred dollar yeah, deposit yeah, yeah. because you have to pay for that in advance. Yeah. yeah. So the final balance comes out uh, ninety days before departure, which would be fourth uh, of August. So the final cutoff date is fourth of August. So let's say you As pay when you have to pay in full. That's yeah. when you have to pay in full. Yeah. Okay. So let's say you pay so, $600. The balance would be around $2,500. That's what you have to pay by 4th of August. Okay. Yeah. And I know I had this question uh, in a board meeting. Um, it wasn't clear. Okay. So I think you made it clear today. It is double occupancy. So do I pick who I want? Like if I'm traveling by myself, mm -hmm. do you assign somebody to share a room with me? Or how does that work? Uh, we can't assign somebody directly. So either you have a travel partner or within your chamber group, if somebody is also looking for a like-minded travel partner, uh, we can't go to another chamber asking for potential travel partners because firstly, uh, it's, it's, it's a seven night sharing a room with somebody. So not many people are comfortable. And secondly, even if the pandemic is kind of waned off, it's still there. So you want to be right. really sure whom you're sharing the room with. So if you find a, a traveler in your, in your potential list of travelers who want a room partner, you can obviously look over it. Otherwise, it is, uh, the supplement is applicable. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love what you said. It's family and friends. So this is a chamber-sponsored trip. We hope that you'll join us. And we hope that you'll invite your family and friends to join us because... Yeah the more the merrier, and we hope that we'll have a great turnout. And actually, is there a limit to the number of people that can sign on for this tour? It is unlimited unless we are sold out and we'll let you know well in advance if we are sold out. And what we can do is offer another date in that case. Uh, the additional thing I'd like to mention is uh, about child policy. When I say family and friends, it is allowed, but kids below 12 are not allowed on this trip. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good to, to note. And um, so, you know, I just want to say thank you for putting this trip together. I think it's really enticing. Oh my gosh. I would love to go to Greece. And I know that there are so many people here in our chamber who would love to join us on this trip. Is there a minimum to a number of people that we need to have to offer this to our members and their family. Let's start with just two passengers. Just two passengers. Just two passengers are needed to make this trip to Greece possible through the Hancock Chamber of Commerce. So also, I just want to mention too, as we close, that all of this information is on the Chamber website at hancockchamber.org. And you can go to the home page. You can find the brochure there. You can find the online form and you can also find the printed form that you can download and print. So we hope you will join us. And the deadline again is April 29th for early bird cutoff.
Yeah, please utilize that. That's worth $269 of saving. And if you have any questions, I'm Tish Williams, Executive Director of the Hancock Chamber, and I hope that you will call me at 228-467-9048 to let me know that you want to join this trip to Greece. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you.